We were just looking at some of the equations on your handy dandy uh, data booklet for fields and forces and how awesomely uh, arranged they are. But there were two equations that we didn't talk about yet, so that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, one of them, uh, well both of these actually, have to do with magnetic forces. So this time we're going to take a look at, uh, let's say we have a moving charge in a magnetic field. So here what we do is we have a charge. This could be an electron, it could be a proton, it could be an alpha particle, whatever. It's just zooming along and all of a sudden it runs into a magnetic field. The question is what happens to it? Well it's going to feel a force and it's going to depend on a few things. So the equation goes like this. Uh, F equals Q V B sine theta. This is the equation as it appears in your data booklet. So I'll just put maybe some blue around it. So there's the equation. Now maybe we'd better label a few things. Uh, they're a little bit sloppy here because technically this is a vector, this is a vector, this is a vector, but this is a scalar. And, but they actually don't differentiate between those. So they just say F is QVB sine theta. So first of all, what's F? F is the magnetic force. In other words, this is the force felt by the particle, so this, by this charge. So magnetic force, and force is measured in Newtons. Hope you are thinking that. Well, what's Q? Q, uh, we've looked at from topic five, that's the charge. So this could be the charge of the electron or proton or whatever else. And charge is measured in coulombs. So that's the charge of the particle. V is the speed of the particle. And speed is measured in meters per second. Now what's B? Turns out B is the magnetic field strength. So we can actually measure how strong a magnetic field is. We actually have a unit for it. So we can measure the strength of a magnetic field, how magnetic something is. And it uses a really neat unit called T. Now it's not temperature, it actually is a Tesla. So it's named after a guy named Tesla. He did some really interesting things uh, with not just magnetism, he did things with like uh, you know, making lightning machines, and he did all sorts of really cool stuff. He's actually a scientist worth looking at, this uh, Tesla. But uh, we've got B, which is a magnetic field strength measured in Teslas. And finally, we have theta. So theta is the angle between, now in this case, it's going to be between the uh, speed and the magnetic field strength. In other words, or the magnetic field. So what I mean by there, that is that, well, uh, depending on how it's moving along, you can actually calculate, well, if you know which way it's going and you know which way the magnetic field lines are oriented, then you can figure out uh, what the angle is between them. And from there, you can figure out the magnitude of the magnetic force. Now, it turns out it's going to depend. There's going to be a few interesting things that could happen. What if your speed and your magnetic field are parallel. Well that means that si well, that means the angle between them is going to be zero. Sine of zero is still zero, so that means there's no force felt. What that tells you then is that if you have a little particle that's flying around and it runs into you know magnetic fields uh, lines that are exactly parallel to it, it'll just fly through unnoticed. It won't care. But what's interesting is if this angle is not zero, if it's either 90 degrees or anything in the middle, all sorts of interesting things can happen. Then it can actually, you know, if it's flying along, let's say this way, and there's magnetic field lines going up, then it's going to start flying around and doing some circular weird stuff, which I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you some of these what are called hand rules. These are tricks to figure out what actually happens. So that's moving charge in a magnetic field. But we can also have a wire in a magnetic field. So if we have a wire in a magnetic field, we also have an equation for that. And it goes F equals B I L sine 
theta. So this is now a situation where instead of just having a particle moving along some sort of charge, now you actually have some wire. You have a wire that has a current running through it. If you do that, that wire is going to feel a force. There's a neat experiment you can do with a magnet and you actually, what you do is you, you run a wire uh, with some current through it. And what happens is as soon as you turn on the current, the wire will actually sort of float up or down or be deflected somehow. And that's because there is a force on this wire. So this F is the same. It's still the magnetic force in Newtons. So that I'm not going to change. B is still the magnetic field strength in Teslas. Now I, just to make sure we're clear here, that is the current in the wire. And that's measured as always in amperes. L is the length of the wire. So it depends how long the wire is. And the length of the wire is going to be measured in meters. And this angle then, theta, is going to be the angle It's going to be the angle between the current and the magnetic field strength, so between I and B. So this is kind of neat. What this can do is this can help you out, well, both of these equations here tell you something about what happens to the forces on either particles or wires if there's a magnetic field present. Now, this only works if it's a charged particle. If a particle has no charge, then obviously it won't work. Nothing will happen. The force will be zero, so it'll just fly right through undeflected. And just like if you have a wire and then you stop the current, well, then nothing will happen. What's interesting, though, is if you have a moving particle or a current, then you do have a force on the wire or on the particle. This is really cool. It actually involves something that's more uh, from the uh, higher level topic, uh, where we talk about um, induced magnetic fields and induced uh, currents and things like this. So what turns out is that electricity causes magnetism. This is going a little bit beyond what we need to know about, but I think it's really interesting. So imagine you have a wire. Well, it's not quite beyond because the, um, the hand rules you're supposed to learn about do talk about this. So let's say you have a wire with some current in it. Turns out just that wire with nothing else, that wire creates a magnetic field around it. Which means if you have a little compass and you put it near that wire that has current going through it, the compass is going to point in different directions depending on where you place it. So you're going to sort of mess up how the compass thinks where north is because it's near that wire. So there was actually a Danish guy named H.C. Uh, Ørsted who figured that out. But um, so the Danes are really proud of him. But it turns out that the opposite happens too. You can create a, uh, an induced current by just moving a magnetic field. So it turns out if you take a magnet and you, sort of, and you just have a wire, and with the wire is not connected to a battery. The wire is maybe just connected to a light bulb, let's say. So just a wire connected to a light bulb, but no energy source. If you take that though, and then you take a magnet and just wiggle it around it, turns out moving magnetic fields create current. And this you might think, whoa, that's so weird. But it turns out, yeah, that actually happens. It's called, uh, well, we can say it's the induced EMF. So it'll be, uh, that'll be the induced um, potential difference across something. So in uh, one of the additional higher level topics, we actually go through this in detail. But it has some really neat practical implications. Uh, first of all, when we talk in uh, topic eight, which is all about energy uh, and power and climate change. Well, the part about nuclear power or even power generation, it really revolves around this. The whole idea is this. You somehow take a big wheel and you make that wheel turn somehow. The different sources of energy are all about turning that wheel. Now we call it a turbine, but it's just imagine a big wheel with some magnets on the end of it. So just imagine a wheel with a few magnets sort of glued to the edges of it. What you do then is you cause that wheel to turn through different reasons. Maybe it's hydroelectric, so that means you have water that's turning a wheel. Or maybe it's something that uses nuclear power. All you do then is you use nuclear energy to heat up some water. The water makes steam and the steam turns that wheel. So all that it's about is just turning a wheel. Now why do we care about turning a wheel? Why does that give us energy? Well, it's because that wheel has magnets on the edges of it. And what you do then is you have just a wire sitting near it. 
It turns out those moving magnetic fields, like I talked about, those will create an induced current, and that gives you electricity. That's how virtually all uh, power generation is done throughout the world. It just depends on your source. So maybe you just shovel a whole bunch of fossil fuels, shovel a whole bunch of coal into a big furnace. That thing creates heat. That heat will um, heat up water. That water will create steam and the steam will turn the engine, the turbine. That turbine has magnets on the end of it and that then, if you have a wire near it, it'll create electricity. Now you might think, oh, that only works for power generation. Nope. It works on my bicycle, for example. In Denmark, it's uh, a country where almost everybody uses a bike, including me. And um, it's a very dark country in the winter just because um, it gets dark so early. So because of that, then my little bike, rather than have these little lights that I have to buy and then people would always steal them, I just install these really cool little lights that, and it works the same exact way. So I've got little magnets. I've got two little magnets on my wheel of my bike. It's actually near the center. I've got two little magnets posted there. And what I do is I have a little light that's actually mounted onto the fork. So what happens on that little light, uh, as the magnets fly by it, you know, as the magnets go around, as I'm biking along, the moving magnets create electricity, and that means my little light goes on. So how cool is that? So this is an example, or just at least a few things, talking about these key equations which revolve around the forces on charged particles or wires.